Hi, Sunday School friends. Welcome back. We are finishing off the book of Numbers this week. We're going to see if the Israelites ever get to the promised land. We're going to find out. We're going to keep going. So when we left off last week, remember what happened? The Israelites were too scared to enter the promised land. They did not trust God to fulfill his promises. Now, because they didn't listen to God, they are barred. They cannot enter the promised land. Those that are living at the time, only two of them, Joshua and Caleb. Remember them from last week? They were the two spies who encouraged the Israelites to obey God's command, to trust in God. Now, the Israelites realized that they have messed up. They're going to be living in the desert for a while and wandering around instead of enjoying the good land that God had prepared for them. So this was uh, this is their punishment for not trusting and believing in God. So that's where our story picks up today. So the Israelites, they're wandering through the desert. Now, during this time, here we go. Whoops. They had fought and won many battles. They captured cities and they conquered the enemies of God who attacked them. And one of these nations that wanted to hurt uh, Israel was known as Moab. Now, when the Moabites saw the great number of people, how big and powerful that the Israelite army was, the Moabite king, he felt very nervous. Ooh. So he got whoops let me go back one he got an idea in his head uh he knew of a man named balaam who cursed people now that meant that he would say bad things and he would wish for bad things to happen to them so the king he sends some men to this man balaam and he says here we'll give you all this money if you go and curse the israelites but God told Balaam, mm -mm -mm, you're not going to do that. Don't take that money from them. So Balaam didn't. So the men go back to the king of Moab and they say, sorry, he wouldn't take the money, you know? Nope. So the king says, well, go try again. Give him more, offer him more money. So the men go back and they offer him even more money. And this time the Lord tells Balaam to go with the king's men. So the Lord had a special plan for Balaam. He wanted to show that the Lord, that he is more awesome than any magic or curses or evil spirit that Balaam or these other Moabites believed in. So, okay, so Balaam's going to go with these guys to these Moabites to the Israelite camp, right? So he puts a saddle on his donkey and gets on the road, right? They're, they're going down the road. Now, as they're going, the donkey sees an angel standing in the middle of the road, but Balaam doesn't see the angel. The angel is invisible to the donkey, but the donkey, he stops because he doesn't want to run into the angel, right? He's spooked. So he stops. And you know what Balaam does that's really terrible. He takes a stick and he hits the donkey. He gets so mad that the donkey won't go that he starts hitting it. Now, friends, should we ever hit an animal? No, no, no. That was awful of Balaam. So this happens. So he finally gets the donkey to go, right? But this happens three times that the donkey stops in, in the middle of the road. And Balaam, every time he just, he hits the donkey and he's just really mean to the donkey, right? Because he doesn't see the angel. He doesn't know why the donkey is stopping and won't, and won't go anymore, right? The donkey just, he sits down and he is not going to go past that angel. So like I said, this happened three times. And then the most amazing thing happened. The donkey turns around, for reals, you guys, the donkey turns around to Balaam and he says, the donkey tells him, what have I done to make you hit me three times? Now the angel appeared to Balaam. So now the angel's not invisible. Balaam can see what the donkey's been seeing this whole entire time. 
oh, this was Balaam when he got really mad that the donkey wouldn't go on and he was really mean to him. And here, now they can both see the angel with the sword, right? And so Balaam, the angel says, why do you keep hitting your donkey? If the donkey would not have kept stopping, I would have killed you by now. See, don't hit animals. Only God could make a donkey talk and an angel appear. Now Balaam realized that the Lord was angry with him. Now he was going to do exactly what God said he should do. So Balaam, he meets with the king of Moab, right? And when he got there, he did not curse the Israelites. He didn't do it. He only said good things about them. He blessed them and talked about how good the Lord was. He didn't say one bad thing. He even had altars built so that he could worship the Lord. Now the king, the Moabite king, he was angry. This was not what he had planned at all, right? He had wanted Balaam to say bad things about the Israelites. Now the king <clears throat> was unhappy. Sorry, one sec, guys. And some water. So the king was unhappy, but the Lord was pleased. God wants everyone to say good things things to, for nice things to nice words to come out of our mouths right use kind words we've had several lessons talking about being in control of our tongue and using kind words and the story about Balak sorry about Balaam Balak was the king's name about Balaam shows how the Lord doesn't like it when we say bad things right he put a talking donkey and an angel in Balaam's way to stop bad words from coming from his mouth, right? The Lord wants us to use kind words, right? So wrapping up the book of Numbers, I put a little donkey here so we remember the, the talking donkey. You know, the the book of Numbers it was it was a history telling us about what happened was with uh, the Israelites, right? We're learning their history, but more than that, it reminds us that God He doesn't tolerate. That means He doesn't like. He doesn't put up with complaining um, and disbelief. Remember the fear that they wouldn't uh, enter the promised land, uh, mean words, and talking bad about people. God doesn't like any of that, and He doesn't put up with it without. Uh, consequences, right? We see that the Israelites, the consequences for their bad actions, they weren't able to enter the, the promised land for 40 years. God, through, through disciplining the Israelites by not letting them into the promised land, um, he taught his people how to walk with him, you know, not just with their feet, uh, but with their, their mouths and worship with their hands and service and with their lives, uh, to live as witnesses to the surrounding nations, right? We always say, um, be doers in God's word. Let your light shine for Jesus. Don't just say it, do it, be a doer, act it out. Let your light for Jesus shine for the whole world to see. So the Israelites were God's people and he was their God and he expected them to act like it. Just like today, he still expects us to act like it, right? So we can look at the numbers and we can know we're not going to be grumbling and complaining, right? We're not going to have that spirit of fear. We know that if God is for us, who could be against us? We're not going to use mean words against people, right? We're going to use kind words that build each other up, fill, fill buckets with good things, right? Um, and say kind things because that's what the Lord wants from us. So I hope you uh, enjoyed learning about the, the talking donkey um, that the Lord used to teach Balaam a lesson and the book of Numbers. And we're going to see what happens next week um, if the Israelites ever get to finally enter the promised land. Have a blessed week, friends. Love you. Miss you. Bye.